thank you. I'd love to take some questions if people have them. This is my favourite part, and this massively takes me out of my comfort zone most of the time as well. <laughs> Why do the amplifiers have to be so cold? Um, it's just to try and reduce the amount of noise. So you have what's called thermal noise inside a, a semiconductor transistor. And so by cooling it, you're removing that noise instantly from it. So it's just to try and get as low noise as possible. Thank you. That was brilliant. Um, you said that it's really important for people to get out there and show what they do. Who showed you and how did you get to where you are? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so, so I credit a lot of it with, um, with my mum and dad, really. Um, neither one who are scientists or engineers. Um, but what they did was when I, when I asked why this, why that, why this, why that, like constantly, or how this, how that, you know, constantly, they never said, shut up. You know, they always said, um, I don't know, but let's find out together. And so, so I was never put off by it. Um, and, and it was sort of an adventure that, that we would explore things and find things out together. Um, so it wasn't really about being surrounded by people who knew all the answers. It was being surrounded by people who were prepared to find out the answers with you, I guess. Um, hi, I, uh, I work in low carbon technologies and I just wondered, it struck me that the, the SKA is like an amazing project, but the amount of energy that will be needed to cool all those supercomputers is going to be immense. So is there any discussion of, of how you're going to create that electricity to, to cool them in the first place? Yeah, so, um, so they're in quite sunny climates um, and so they're hoping that solar energy will help. Um, but, it, but I honestly don't think the, the supercomputers will, will do the job anyway. You know, I think maybe we just have to completely rethink how we do it. Um, and, and maybe there is a, there is a place for the, the citizen scientist, the citizen engineer, in the way that years ago, you remember the, the SETI at Home project where you had the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and you could download this... Um, I guess we call it an app these days, um, but you could download a program on your personal computer when you weren't using it, as long as it was connected to the internet. SETI would use it to reduce their data and then send it back. So, so we could do things like that. So rather than creating more and more heat from new computers, start using other people's computers as well. Um, but we have to get really creative and, and try and solve that as a challenge. Um, since you're an engineer, I just want to know, like, if you want to learn about amplifiers and other electronics, do you recommend any books or websites which are really useful? Um, so the, the book I would recommend is called Horowitz and Hill, um, who are the two authors, and it's called The Art of Electronics. That is sort of the Bible of, of electronic books. So Horowitz and Hill, The Art of Electronics, is probably my favourite book. Um, it's certainly... Um, saw me through my sort of PhD and, and things as well. Um, and it's, it's written in a, a very accessible way, I think, um, but it's still useful to, to me today when we're sort of thinking about <coughs> new and innovative ways of, of designing. Um, in terms of what's out there online, there are so many really accessible videos that people make these days um, online, um, just in, even in YouTube, you know, just... Um, some really, really accessible things. So, yeah, just go online onto YouTube. But the art of electronics, I think, would be a, a Bible to keep. Hi. Um, I just have a question around uh, the kind of funding and support that you got for the Robot Orchestra. So, I, like, it's obviously amazing the amount of resource that you had. Um, I think any tips around if other people are thinking about this, how they could kind of gain the support that you need to bring on people like Siemens? Um, so, I'll tell you what I did and then see if that, that helps. Um, so, at uh, Manchester Science Festival um, in the Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester, um, they, we had sort of a, um, as, as part of one evening, we sort of talked about the robot orchestra. We didn't have any instruments then, um, but we just talked about it. And, and I think what was really powerful was there was a little girl who, um, 
who was writing a, a book about space, and she was dressed up as an astronaut as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we'd been chatting for a period of time before that, and we were sort of going through... Um, I was sort of helping a bit with, with her books and things. And, um, and I said to her on that day, would you come up onto the stage with me and talk about, um, you know, building a, a, a robot orchestra, getting the public involved, getting children, mainly children, involved in this? And, uh, and she said yes. I mean, she was super nervous, but she was brilliant, you know, when she was up there. And so we just had a bit of a chat, like, on stage um, when lots of people were there. We, we, got, we came down off the stage, and Jürgen Meyer, who is the CEO of of Siemens just came over and said, how can we help? So, uh, yeah, I was like, okay, <laughs> money, please. <laughs> um, so, money and engineers, please. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, that, that was my experience, um, and that, I think that worked really well. <laughs> That's not to say you should. <laughs> it worked really well because it was a, a natural thing to happen. <laughs> you shouldn't go and get children off the street, and I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm going to stop now. Someone, someone else ask me a question, please. <laughs> well, thank you for the presentation. Really, really nice. Uh, just to know about the technologies to study the space, I wonder if the, these technologies could also be used to study the inside, inside the planet and the inner um, um, energies or the way that the magma is... Um, evolving or, or the formations inside and how that energy could be used uh, well for humanity yeah um, so anywhere where you need really really sensitive receivers um, I think you can sort of technology transfer from <clears throat> excuse me from what we're doing now into other areas I've never really looked into um, to that sort of geophysics sort of side of it but but we've done some work with farming and um, and agriculture, and trying to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to save a precious resource in water. So, do you need to irrigate the fields or not? Um, and some of the technology that we use in the radio astronomy receivers, we've put into these little nodes that we bury in the soil, but they have to be wireless. They're not wired. They're not tethered at all. So that sort of a whole bunch of nodes. Imagine a, a big farmer's field. A whole bunch of nodes is all over the field, and then the farmer can come along in their tractor, and the the nodes harvest the energy from from a, a, an electromagnetic reader on the on the um, on the tractor, and it reads it in real time. So it will read um, the node which has sensors about. Um, uh, the temperature of the soil, the nutrients, etc., within the soil, and if it needs irrigating or not. And so, so in real time, a farmer could make a, a decision whether to irrigate or not as it goes across all of these nodes. So you just use the water in areas of the field that actually need it and not in, in other areas. So, so that's one of the areas that we've looked at. Hello. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, was there a robot that was so terribly out of tune that he had to be uh, excluded from the orchestra? Oh, just one? Yeah, there was a load. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, th there were so many um, out of tune ones. Um, and the wonderful thing about the musicians and, and the engineers working together is every single instrument we had was part of that orchestra somehow. Um, and it was never... I don't think we ever sort of said you know, it's a, you're out, you know. Um, we tried to make everything work, but there were tons that were, that needed a lot of work, you know, to, to get them in tune. Um, but, but, but a lot that weren't, you know, that breakfast bot one that I, that I showed, you know, the fact that the children tuned them, um, you know, I just thought was, was incredible. But yeah, every, every one that was built and survived a journey, because they don't always survive the journey if you're taking them somewhere else, um, was, has been played in the, in the robot orchestra. Yeah. Uh, hey, thank you. Um, in the field of space exploration, is there anything you'd especially like to see as a, a breakthrough within, say, like the lifetime of your career? Or to ask it in a different way, what should young kids be looking forward to as being like the next thing they can get excited about? Um, in terms of the, uh, what the tools that, that we engineer could could observe, do you mean? Uh, if I'm honest, the thing that comes to mind is the next moon landing. What is the next event that people can really get behind? 
Okay. Um, so I think there are, there will be more moon landings, I think. Hopefully women might go. Um, I think there will be explorations to Mars, um, which will really sort of get the backing of, of the public. I think, um, I think robots will go there first. Humanoid robots will go to Mars first. Um, and so I think that's really, really exciting. Looking further afield, there are people already working on where, where is that new Earth? Because it probably isn't in our solar system. So where is it? Um, how do we get there? And I think that's, a, that's fascinating. You know, how do we get there? Um, do we have the, the rocket technology right now to, to get somewhere that's outside of our solar system? Um, if we did, how long would it take? Um, you probably wouldn't be able to get there in one generation. Does that mean you have this space generation who live and die on a spaceship just to, in order to become a two-planet species? Um, so I think the, the two-planet species and, and how you get there is really, really interesting. Uh, hi there. I'm hi. wondering if there's a thinkering equivalent in the virtual world, so some sort of mass experiment where people can play with something in the virtual world and put something together. Oh, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know what it... I think probably there is. I don't know what it would be. I'd have to have a think about what it is. <laughs> what? what? What was the answer? Oh, Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah, Minecraft. So, so in Minecraft... Um, there was a so, so when we had one of these hackathon days, some of the um, the children were doing Minecraft, and what one of the children actually did. This is not answering your question, by the way. Sorry, I'm sort of going slightly off topic. Um, what one of the children did was they wanted to bring it out of the virtual world and into reality, and, and sort of combine the two. And so they went to Maplin, an electronic shop, and they they bought a, a robot hand, and they hacked the robot hand so that it appeared in Minecraft, so that when they moved the hand, so they had sort of their laptop set up and then the hand next to it, so that when they moved the hand physically, it moved in Minecraft and so it would pick up bricks or you know, start building things and it would actually be doing it um, in, in, uh, in real life as well as in the virtual world as well. But it would be really nice to think about some sort of citizen project that would get everyone together um, in the virtual world. Maybe Minecraft is the way forward, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, well, well, thank you very much for all your questions. Hopefully um, I get a chance to, to talk to some of you more after this as well. Thank you. So before I wind up proceedings, it occurs to me that I didn't tell you to switch off your mobile phones or where the fire exits were. But since no one's mobile phone went off, and since we haven't had a fire, that proves I must be psychic, I think. In case there's a fire in the next 30 seconds, then the fire exit is at the back there. There's also one here, but I wouldn't go through there. You'll get lost. So let me now uh, finish the evening by thanking Daniela once again for a truly inspiring lecture and uh, as a musician myself I really appreciated the noises coming from it sounds better than me playing the violin I can tell you um, so the only remaining thing to do is for me to make the presentation um, of the Faraday uh, 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 lecture and uh, here is the scroll thank you very much uh, and here is um, the medal Wow, we. Well, That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful.